Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to look at this month's Smart Art Box. This video is brought to you by SmartArtBox.com. I'll have a link in the video description so you can subscribe or just check it out if you want to. This is a fantastic idea for a holiday gift too. If you're trying to think of what to get that artsy fartsy person in your life, this is a wonderful idea because it's a surprise every month and I love it because it introduces me to things that I'm not familiar with. So uh, first in every box you get a brochure and that just gives you a project idea, uh, something to go by this month's um uh, offerings is encaustic art and that is like a melted wax art so it tells you information about all the products that are included and also some history which is great if you do homeschooling because then you can give that history lesson as well and really broaden your kids understanding of, um, of art and art history and the different uh, techniques that are used but um, if you're like me and you just like to try something different it's just a great um, not overwhelming introduction so we have some Encausticos paint sticks. These are uh, pigment and in a wax binder that we melt. Um, hope we wish me luck with this. Uh, we have a spatula, a catalyst spatula. You may be familiar with these if you do any like gelatin print making because you can use these to draw on the gelatin plate without damaging it. Um, you could actually just use a silicone spatula from you know any dollar store as long as it's silicone and won't melt. Um, but this is nice because these are expensive so I'm glad that this is included. I've always wanted a few of these but I just couldn't I couldn't pay the price knowing I can go to the Dollar Tree and cut up some silicone spatulas and make my own so I'm happy to have a real real honest to goodness big girl art supply um, we have a hog bristle brush and because the wax is very rough on brushes so you want to make sure you're using something that's very durable otherwise you're gonna be throwing brushes away and that's not good we have a aluminum or some sort of metal palette for melting our sticks on and for a surface we have Oh, this is really thick. Look at that. It's like a thick cardboard panel. It is a um, encaustic board by Ampersand Art Supply. They make really high quality um, art boards. So the um, the first thing we're going to have to do is figure out how we're going to melt our wax. And I actually, I've got a coffee mug warmer here and I'm hoping this is going to be hot enough. Um, I'm going to try just setting that, that plate up there. I might just have to cover this with aluminum foil and melt directly on the aluminum foil because I'm not sure if it's gonna make this plate hot enough to melt my wax or not. But uh, we, can, um, we can get started with our design anyway. So I want to sketch on here, and I think because, you know, Chris, it's almost Christmas time and uh, poinsettia flowers are in season, I thought I would like to do maybe a poinsettia flower painting. And um, I also grabbed from a previous Smart Art box some oil pastels because I know these are a wax based medium. I'll be able to use that with the encaustic uh, bars if I need another color because the colors that come in this are um, very traditional colors. You've got kind of like an earthy red, um, you have a like a yellow ochre color, and you have like a comes like a hooker's green or like a, a sap green color and then you've got a clear blending medium. You can also use this as an adhesive if you have some collage elements you want to put down. I've got some mulberry paper I'm, I'm going to consider sticking down there but, um, but we're going to start off. I'm going to see first of all if I can sketch. Yes I can sketch with these so that's good. I think I'm going to start with a little um, those little yellow, actually technically the flowers of the poinsettia. I'm actually going to make them big because this is such a it's such, these are such big sticks. I have no idea what sort of detail I'm going to be able to muster with this. So I'm just going to make the center a little bit bigger. So that way I can make my, my leaves a little bit bigger. And, um, and I won't have to feel like I'm kind of cramped trying to get, get in. I'm doing some fairly expressive leaves here, adding lots of little wiggles. I don't know if I'll be able to keep that detail, um, as I go, but I'm gonna try. That's what it's all about. That's why I love these boxes. People ask me a lot about subscription boxes. Um, I've only tried a couple and Smart Art is the only one I felt like really delivers a lot of um, a lot of value, a lot of bang for the buck. I'm gonna put in some of the green leaves, which actually these are all, they're all leaves. The flower's actually the yellow part in the center. I've, I've come to learn. So you can see that dry, the sticks do not, do not give you that much um, color, but it's definitely enough to sketch it out. So I'm going to see if this is hot enough to melt. Um, I think I'm going to grab some, some aluminum foil and actually cover my, um, 
my coffee warmer and use it directly because it's melting a little bit but not at the rate I'm gonna need for painting so hang on a second okay I've got some heavy duty foil here I'm just gonna cut off a piece to fix I don't think I need to double it up because I am using the heavy stuff if using the light stuff I would double it up and my warmer is hot right now so I'm gonna have to be careful that I don't burn myself so I'm just gonna gently whoa that's that is hot ah I'm just gonna set that down there and hope it doesn't uh that ought to melt though and oh yeah look at that it's melting really well now look at that that's kind of cool okay so um i think you know what i think i ought to do actually you know what i can do because i have extra foil i wonder if i could just tear a piece pretty i should have cut it you know what i can make i can make uh temporary palettes look at that I'm going to start off with the yellow, actually, because I'm going to do the yellow in the background. Look at that. That's 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 satisfying. Ooh, I'm just going to melt wax. This is... Oh, I like that. That's nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, why don't we give, give this a whirl? Um, I should... Let me put some paper down underneath my work surface, too. Hold on a second. Okay. I have some, uh, some stuff down on my... Um... Oh, that's kind of fun. Probably not the most effective way to do this. Of fun though I like the way it smells that's a really nice um a really nice smell to it I'm gonna try yeah that's not really gonna work very well just dries too quick in the air let's see I might have to get out my heat gun my stamping gun oh that's kind of cool oh this is this is this is oddly satisfying actually um, something else I have, I have this like, um, I think it's like a buffet warmer. I got it at a yard sale a couple of years ago. I bet I could set my board on that. It might actually keep the board hot enough. I don't know. Actually, this is really fun. I like the, the brush strokes. Check out, check that out. Look at the texture in that. That is really cool. I like that. I have a feeling I'm going to use up all of these sticks though. Um, but the nice thing about this is that getting into encaustic art is very expensive. I have I went to a demonstration once um, at a local art gallery, and I just I fell in love. I just loved it. But then, so then I went home and I started looking the art supply catalogs to see, okay, what what would it cost me to, to me to get into this? <clears throat> and it was just too prohibitive for for a whim, you know. I'm like, well, if I really don't like this, then I would have spent so much money and. I, I was it just felt very foolish for me to do that but when you can get in on it I mean these boxes are 50 bucks and you can see if you like it before spending more money I think it's really worthwhile um, this coffee mug is mug warmer is working ideally for this and I could just um, get rid of the I actually think I could use the aluminum foil over and over again I don't think I'd even need to throw it away uh, I think the plate if I they recommend using like a pancake griddle but I'm kind of a gom, so I try to keep my um, food appliances away from my craft room, just because I'm uh, I'm just I'm just a gom. I don't want to like get wax in it and cause a fire, or get you know unsafe chemicals on my kids' you know food. I think these are non toxic. They smell so good. You can smell the beeswax in them. Oh my gosh, I love the smell. Reminds me of making candles. I used to make candles with my um, with my students when I did art camps in the summer, and that's what this reminds me of. I just look at that texture. It's so fun. It just and it dries so quickly. It just has this really cool feeling to it. So I'm just gonna keep on going around and adding in my background just like this. I think I will pause the video uh, just because I, it's gonna be very repetitive. Um, it's very meditative though. I'm finding this to be so relaxing. I just wanna, I just wanna melt wax. I just want, I could melt crayons. I could, you could probably add crayons onto it too if you wanted to um, add more color, like get a good quality crayon like a Crayola. Um, it'd be a great way to also experiment and see if you like this before you invest a lot of money. Um, oh, this is, this is really fun. All right, I'm going to pause it. We'll be back after I've got the background all in. Okay, here we are with the, um, the background done. I want you to see the texture. It's just really cool. And it's not like, it doesn't feel like it's going to, it won't smudge off my fingers or anything. It's, it's kind of a hard shell. Um, it is a type of wax. I'm trying to see if I can, I can poke my fingernail in it, um, and leave a mark. 
but um, but it's harder than like a candle a candle per se um, and I want to show you this is how much of the stick I used to do that background I'll show you the full sticking combination so I mean you do use quite a bit so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the green I'm just gonna try to melt some of that off my brush first but I'm going to green and yellow is a part of green so I'm really not worried about it too much let's get some of the extra off and I'm gonna set that aside because I'm gonna use yellow again for the middle put the green one on there and I'm gonna melt down some of these some of this green stick look at that isn't that satisfying and we're gonna go in and we are going to block in our green leaves a nice big amount of this now that I have an idea of how much it's gonna use I know um, I know I want to melt quite a bit. I think another thing you could do is if you had like a flat bottom can, like a cat food dish or something like that, I think you could use that. That would be a great way to melt your wax and store it so that you could just, you know, pop the dish on that you're ready to use. You might need like a pair of, um, uh, like tweezers or ply pliers would be a better idea. Pliers to lift off the can in case the edges get hot. But, um, but that would give you, might be another option that's a little less disposable than the, um, than the uh, aluminum foil here. Although I bet you could, you know, cause once they dry, they're hard. They're not gonna smudge off or anything. I bet you could just put all these little pieces of foil in like a, you know, in your, keep it, everything in your smart art box, put everything right in there and then just reuse the foil. You know, just melt all your greens on one green piece of foil and keep doing that. I mean, there's no reason you'd have to throw it away unless you had a hole in it. Cause you don't want it to leak on your, um, you don't want it to leak underneath onto your coffee mug warmer. And these coffee mug or candle warmers are like five dollars. They're not expensive. So cool. There's our first leaf. It looks real dark on the camera, but it's it's like a kind of like an olive green color. I might brighten it up a little bit. Why don't we try brightening? Why don't we try mixing? Why don't we do that? Because might as well try it. I mean, I'm not like invested. I don't have a huge um, you know idea invested in this. I think I'm gonna try some of these pastels from before. Now these might leave more of a smudgeable. Um, oh look at that. Oh my gosh. I love it. Let's mix a little nice bright green, bright yellow in there. Oh my gosh. I love this. Oh, <laughs> this is awesome. Okay. So I'm going to put like a little highlight on my, oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. Oh, we can highlight. We can mix colors. Oh, I think that's really cool. I might need to go in with a, um, get a smaller brush that I can, I can, the angled brush is nice because you can use the tip of the angle to get some detail. Um, I wonder if I did a, like a little bit of white or if that will muddy it up. Let's try that. Um, so that you do, you do get a lot of, a lot of, um, different strokes that you can get with an angled brush. So I kind of like that. Oh, and I could do like pointillism if I wanted to. I think I would wait and do all the darks in the leaf first and then go in and do any sort of highlighting just so that I didn't end up getting it too muddy, but that's kind of cool. I'm going to go around, fill in the rest of the green leaves and it'll come back for the red poinsettia leaves. I just wanted to show you really quickly the difference between adding the oil pastel to these ones and just using the flat color, how they're, how much more lively these are. And simply all I did was, um, I just put my pastel onto the, um, the hot plate here and just melted some down and then just went in and, um, added some highlights on the uh, the flowers. I did go and grab an oil painting brush here um, that I'll probably have to dedicate to encaustics after just because it let me get a little bit more detail. Um, there is a clean, uh, clear medium that you could use to clean your brushes, but still it will leave some wax behind. I thought about using my batik brushes that I, when I teach a batik class but um but as a but then they would be colored and i decided that i would just i would just uh just sacrifice a brush here and keep it with the encaustic stuff because it is a lot of fun i could totally see myself doing it again but that's all there is to it it's just kind of like uh um 
it's just kind of overlaying these lighter colors and you can go back in with some dark right where the two colors meet if you want to blend them a little bit or you could I guess heat it with a heat tool or a hair dryer or something to blend that enough I just be careful with wax and direct heat because there could be flash I don't know what the flash point of these are so I would be a little cautious with that and probably not recommend it as much as doing something like this which is more of a slow melt and I bet you could even use like a Scentsy warmer or whatever you have for a candle warmer would probably um, also work really well for this so I'm just going to finish up these last two flat these last two leaves and then we'll go on to the red. Okay, now let's try cleaning our brushes because I don't want to sacrifice any other brushes and I got to go to red and red and green, as you know, will make brown. So I'm going to try um, to clean my brush here. So I'm just kind of melting it down on a fresh piece of aluminum foil. I have a coffee mug warmer here, so I've actually shut it off and turned it back on again because I don't know if it like has a certain like shut off time. So hopefully it's still nice and hot. The light's still on on it. Here we go. It's getting soft. We're getting some of that, that out of there. Want to get it good and melted. So you want to get that uh, there. Oh, I think that'll work just fine. And I think once your paper towel comes off clean, your brush will be pretty clean. I think we'll do a little clear. Let's try that clear, see if that will clean, clean our brush off at all. That's just a clear beeswax. It smells so good. Oh, I love the smell of this. It's not too hot for me to, when I take it off, for me to just squeeze the brush, the bristles. It is kind of hot, so be careful. But look at that. It's coming off pretty clear, actually. Let me just see if I... Yeah, I think I've got this one pretty clean. I'm going to do the other one. All right, I think that's clean enough to proceed on to the red. For the red, I'm going to start by melting um, my stick of red. And I just want to show you how much of the green we use because we did use a lot of the other pastels. So that's why we didn't go through quite as much green as we could have. But we're going to start by melting some of this red. And I already know that I'm going to want a brighter red to go with it. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of this nice deep red pastel. It's almost like a um, almost like a rose, a deep rose color. And we'll get some of this. And I'm just playing. I'm having a good time with this. I'm not going to I'm not going to worry about anything too much. Because it's always easier to dull down my color. I want to start bright, okay? So I'm going to start by um, doing the petals underneath. And I think I'll start with the encaustic. I think that if I, um, I think the encaustic has a, a harder shell. I like it feels more hard and glossy, and the pastels feel a little bit more um, soft and matte. So I think that that the encaustic is going to give it a much more, or the actual encaustic sticks are going to give it a much more durable finish. So I would like to have a little bit of encaustic everywhere, just because I think it's going to have a little bit better adhesion. I'm trying to also do some pretty long strokes because um, I want there to be a little bit of a difference even though the green leaves and red leaves are essentially the same they're just different cut they're just like a riper or something or different colors I still would like a little bit of a difference in texture since I can't control other other subtleties with this that I would be able to if I was using watercolors or oils so I just want to make sure that I have something to make it look different from the leaves. I need to have a little bit of contrast there other than just color. So that's kind of what you have to do, I think, is uh, especially if you're working in a new medium. I'm going to turn this around because I do notice like a significant drying time if I have to go on the other side of the box, or the, the other side of the canvas rather. It does dry very quickly. I'm going to go right up into the yellow flower area, just kind of overlapping the yellow flower area a little bit. I want kind of everything bursting from the center. This is fun. I'm really enjoying this. I didn't know if I would. I mean, it's been a long time. It's been probably, I don't know, probably 12 years since I saw that demonstration of encaustics. I had a it may have even been longer than that ago. Um, now I'm going to mix in some of the dark, the brighter reds and start that from the outside and work it down in. 
don't worry about going over any of the other petals because you can paint on top. It's kind of like acrylics in that way. It dries instantly and you can go right on top of it. So you don't have to worry too much. Oh, that's pretty. I like the texture of that. So I'm going to go in on the rest of these petals and just drag in the brighter oil pastel colors I've mixed in um, in from the end. And we'll be back after I've got that done on this first layer. Okay, all the flowers uh, in behind or all the red leaves in behind are done. So now I want to work on the ones in front. And I do want my colors to be a little bit brighter because um, I want them to come towards the viewer a little bit more. So I found this kind of like Charisse colored, um, it's almost like a coral. Uh, pastel and I think I'm going to add that because I think that I can lighten my red without it getting too muddy. I thought about I might add some yellowy color in the highlights but I want to make sure that it's it's nice and bright. I don't know if I'm going to add any of the um, other than what's on my palette mixing in already of the encaustic to it, encaustic bar. Maybe I'll add a little bit to that nice red and start off with that being my darkest color on this top layer because I really like those together. Um, and it's just, for me, this is just an experimentation process because, oh yeah, those mix up really well, um, because I've never done this before. Other than that demo I watched at a, at a gallery um, 12 years ago, this is completely new to me, so I'm just playing and experimenting. So I'm going to let my, when your brush has been off the plate for a bit, it does dry, it does get really hard, so you do have to kind of melt that down before you attempt to bring any more color over. But now I'm just going to lay down this layer and I'm going to try to keep that uh, the brighter color up next to the previous petal so I might go in a little bit of this pink color because I want it to stand out. I'm not sure if that's going to stand out enough but the nice thing is um, it dries so quick that if you need to go over it you can and you don't have to worry so much about getting mud. Like I feel like I do need a little a little bit of yellow in there or something because I'm just not getting the bright color and then I can actually use that color to brighten up the um, the flowers in the middle and I'm thinking since I can use this wax as a bit of a collage element that I might put some like beads or something um, on top of the flowers in the center just to make them stand up a little bit more. I think this brush here that I added in I, I don't think I like this so much for filling in color it's more just for kind of getting the tips of leaves and the tips of the um, of the flower petals or whatever because I feel like it it doesn't hold enough wax so that's that's one thing like I think I would go right back in with this big brush for the main body of any of these leaves just because I feel like I'm not able to carry over as much I hope this isn't completely boring I hope you're finding this to be somewhat useful I know you a lot of you guys get these kit get this kit so I thought I'd be fairly thorough so that this needs to melt a little bit more so that you hopefully can get the most use out of out of your kit because it does come with a, an idea in the brochure for you to do so if you don't like this do that idea I think why I like going in with a big brush first and I think I might just go in and do all my petals with a big brush and then go in with a smaller one to add the details because it's just a lot more effective and a lot quicker to do it that way because your brushes dry out in between and you have to remelt them because I like this little brush because I can get like little details and movements and stuff with that that I can't get with the um, with the bigger brush and I can go and refine edges and get those expressive strokes but I feel like I need to go in there with that big brush first and lay down the color I like that I can kind of be very um, abstract expressionist with this be very like almost Van Gogh like uh, with my brush strokes because they dry so quickly I don't have to worry about muddying it in with something else so let's take a look at that petal I'm gonna bring it up so you can see it sometimes red is hard to see on camera so basically what I'm gonna do is go around with the big brush get most of those paint uh, painted in and then I'll go back in with a little brush and uh, and kind of refine it so I'm just gonna you're gonna go through quite a bit of color on this I'm doing my pinks and my reds It's so satisfying to blend that down <laughs> but go in with my big brush um, so that I can just really lay down a lot of color at once and it also lets me lay down a thinner layer I think so I'm just gonna get these kind of filled in and then I'm gonna go do details with a skinny brush in a minute 
Okay, I have one more petal to do for the uh, the front layer of petals. So I'm just going to show you what I did over here. I just melted down some of these brighter colors, and this is to might be my like kind of final um, glaze. A little bit of this uh, bright pink. I use mostly the uh, this kind of fire engine red and uh, this yellow here. And so if I had any gaps, like right there, you can see a little white sparkle showing through that I didn't get any pastel on. You see some right there. So what I would do is kind of fatten out these um, these petals so that they covered that up so I didn't have that white underneath. Not that it's a huge deal, but I felt like I really wanted that covered. You want to make sure that your... Um, your brush is nice and melty and I like to start at the end and just kind of go with some long strokes back in towards the center. And just bring it out until I filled up that area. See I just went over and filled it up and I got that nice edge. Now if I'm getting out here towards the yellow if I have a really heavy yellow edge it's not going to show up so I'll have more red on my on my brush or I'll go into that more uh, corally pink color so that it will show up against the yellow the yellow background um, and it'll give me that nice shape and movement that I want but I love how it's really difficult to get mud because your your layers dry so quick and when you go onto the background when you're painting on top the stuff underneath does not get hot enough to melt so I think it's kind of really uh, really fun I feel like I need to fatten this up a little bit more on the side because I got a little white sparkle there that I want to cover up. And that pretty much does it. If you want to brighten up any of the back petals, you can do that at this point. But now I'm going to work in the center. And I think I am going to switch over to the yellow tray just because it's already there. Now, I do notice that my um, that my brush kind of, the, the foil sometimes wants to dance around a little bit on the, um, on the, the warmer so I might need to think of something maybe to kind of weigh it down a little bit but uh, but it hasn't been that big of a problem to be honest so I'm just kind of going with it now I want to use any yellows that I've already used so I'm gonna do a combination I'm gonna do some of this original I'm gonna and I and I'm kind of also doing that just because I think the bonding power of that's gonna be a little better I've got this yellow and then I've got the other yellow I was using in the leaves and I want to kind of cross pollinate my colors as much as I can so that everything matches so I'm going to do a little bit of that in there. Let's get a little green on it, but I don't think it's going to make a big difference. And really what I want to do is put a lot of wax in that center area so I can build up some texture because I think I want to embed some stuff in there. So I'm going to start in with this darkest color and just dab it in. And I want to make sure I'm going over any starts and stops of the petals. So I don't have any petals just kind of floating unattached from anything. This round brush does good for making those little flowerette looking. Oh, actually, you know what? I might not embed anything. I thought I would put some beads in there, but I'm going to have to think on that one because I kind of like the way it is right now because look at all the texture I'm able to build up this way. Oh, I kind of like that. I don't know if I'll put beads in there. Look, it's really easy to do, like, pointillism. Oh, that's cool. I think I will get actually some of this dirty color in there, just so I have some contrast. Boy, you know, I don't think I want to, um embed anything in there. Well, I'm having so much fun playing with it though I'm afraid I'm going to um, I'm going to do something that I'm going to regret. Now something I thought that was kind of fun too is that I could like clean off areas on my palette with a spatula. I wonder if I could really spatula in some good... Oh yeah you just gotta be careful because it wants to kind of slide off there. You know what I could probably also do is uh, pour some, maybe pour some from the palette? I'm going to see. Why not? We're all learning here, right? Let's see if I can... Oh, yeah. I'm dripping it right in there. Oh, that's cool. Wow, that's neat. 
that gives you a whole different uh different idea too i feel like i want a little bit more of that on the outside though i don't know how much of this i can actually actually uh oh it's already dry oh you gotta be quick you've got to be really quick i'm gonna see if i can get a few drops on the outside that's fun now you probably if you had like a maybe if you had a little metal cup you could control that a little bit better, but uh, I don't know I really like that and I think I'm about to call it done. I wonder if I can melt a little bit on the stick itself. Eh, that doesn't work very well. Go back in maybe with a couple little little drops and honestly I think I'm gonna call it done. I um, might do more to it in the future, but I really um, I really enjoy how this came out. It was a lot of fun. I feel like um, there is there's a lot of potential with this. Um, I mean, I might think on a bit. I might collage in some tissue paper. If I do that, I will come back and I will show you on this video. I just haven't completely decided yet. Okay, after some consideration, I decided that I did want to do some uh, collaging on there. And so I stamped some things on some tissue paper and I am just going to try laying it out and seeing what I think. I'm tearing it because I want to have a, I think if I use some like clear wax to adhere it, the tissue paper will just kind of disappear because I remember like um, we used to like stamp on candles and what we would do is we would stamp on tissue paper and then we would use a heat tool to attach it to our candles and it would be really pretty. I have not even heat set that. Hopefully that's dry. I used um, Ranger Archival ink on that. This stamp right here that I'm tearing out right now is a stamp that I designed for the Rubber Cafe probably about 10 years ago. <laughs> Quite a long time ago. I don't even know if the company's still in business. But uh, I used to design some rubber stamps for different companies back then. I decided I, I didn't really like designing for other people though that's something I learned about myself it was kind of fun but it definitely wasn't um, wasn't what I was meant to do okay so tearing up let's see what I let's see what I want to add that might be that might be too much I'm not sure um, so I think what I'm gonna do is put some clear wax down here on my hot plate and I've got a fresh piece of um, paper here because I want to make sure that um, oh look at that it absorbs it right up I want to make sure that I don't get any additional color that I might not want and then I'm just going to try to lay it down before it completely dries on me looks like wax paper now and I'm going to do that to each of these and then I'm going to zap it real quick with my stampers embossing gun because um, I don't want to I don't want to prolong heat anything because I don't want to lose my beautiful texture that I've achieved and um, and I'm also afraid of just the flash point I don't know how much heat it can take before it bursts into flames that's doing a good job at, at uh, keeping that uh, ink in like lockdown that's good okay so now I think I always have my heat gun handy so I'm just gonna use that let it heat up off the edge and then I'll bring it kind of bring it bring it over melt it pull it off so I don't want to over melt it let me clean off my spatula Using the spatula to press it down. The uh, the stuff is getting liquefied underneath, though, so I have to be really careful. See, I'm liquefying the stuff underneath, and I don't want to lose a lot of that texture. There was a really cool um, deli wrap at the pub we ate at last night. I wish I'd asked for a clean piece of that because that would have been perfect in this because I had all this like newsprint stuff. So there's how that looks on there. I'm going to do these other two pieces in the same fashion and then we'll see how it looks when I'm done.
Something that I'm doing here is I'm actually sculpting some of the wax up over the tissue paper so that I don't have such a harsh transition. But you have to be careful because it is melting my, uh, my work as I go, so I have to be really careful about that. But it is helping to bridge the gap between these uh, elements a little bit. And I'm, I'm bringing this quite a ways because this is really strong and it's really, um, and it's really moving the wax around a little bit more than I want it to. Okay, so I, something that I did was I just kind of dragged, I used my, um, my colors again and I went in and on the petals and on some of the leaves what I did was I just kind of overlapped where the tissue paper was because I was seeing a ridge and I didn't like that so that just kind of helped me integrate the design and I also feel that that black ink that I stamped with is still a little too in my face so what I'm going to do is actually kind of build a frame and I think I'm going to do that in red because um, it's going to give me a little bit because if I do it in green then I'm afraid it's just going to mix in with the leaves too much if I do it in red then I feel like I'm gonna have a nice frame and I really want to make sure it's uh, sturdy so I'm gonna use some of my red encaustic stick here I just melt it right on that same um, foil and I'm gonna use my spatula because that way I'm not I'm gonna have a totally different kind of brush stroke and edge um, you do have to work pretty quickly with a spatula I found but I love that it just kind of grabs all of the texture it doesn't completely eliminate everything with like a solid swath of color and I and I like that and I like the little drips and I just feel like it gives me that kind of Venetian plaster look and I think it's a beautiful vintage kind of treatment here and it tones down that stamping while accentuating the brush strokes that I originally put down there the ones that didn't get obliterated obliterated when I um when I went in with a heat tool, which I'm not sure if I recommend that or not, just because I don't know what the flash point of this wax would be. And, you know, I, I would, you know, I'd hate to, I'd hate for anyone to, you know, catch anything on fire. So, um, I really like working off of the coffee mug warmer. The only thing I don't like is that my, um, my tin foil likes to dance around on me, but if you use the, uh, the palette that came with it, the little metal palette that came in the box, you wouldn't have that issue, I don't think. Um, it's just, it wouldn't, it was hovering above because it was too big for my little, um, metal coffee cup warmer. But, you know, they suggested using a griddle, and of course that wouldn't happen if you were using a griddle. I think I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. I think this looks pretty good. If you would like to um, see a photo on this, I'll have a photo on my blog. Also, if you would like to get a surprise box of art supplies to your door every month, check out smartartbox.com. There's a link in the video description, and I thank them for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and share this video if you liked it. Until next time, happy crafting.